My name's Emma and I'm a blogger at cruising isn't just for old people .uk. My name's Dania, but I'm better known to my readers as Cruise Miss. I'm Dave Monk, otherwise known as Ship Monk. My name's Flavia Gray and my website is shipsandchampagne.com. And I'm Gary Bembridge of Tips for Travellers. So let's go and hear the best cruise tips that we have for you. I like to pack things like dresses and blouses on the hanger so that when I get on board all I have to do is open the case, get all the hangers together, lift them out, put them straight in the wardrobe with the clothes already attached to them. And ladies, let's face it, even if we took every single hanger out of our wardrobe at home, we'd still be looking for more when we get on board. One of the things I find really challenging when I'm on a cruise is keeping the cabin tidy especially if there's more than two of you sharing a room. So I found the solution to this is to buy one of these over the door shoe hanging racks and they have 24 pockets in them. You can put practically anything in them from sunglasses, sun cream, medicines. These are really easy to get on eBay. You can just order them online. And another little tip is I pre-packed the pockets at home and then I rolled it up and put it in the suitcase. So when I arrived in the ship, all I had to do is unroll it and hang it up. So one of the things that I recommend, and I always do, is take my own little tooth repair kit. So whilst ships have medical centers on board, they do not have dentists on board. So if you have a problem with your tooth, you know, filling falls out or a tooth cracks or something, if you have one of those little tooth repair kits and you can buy them from a drugstore, or from a pharmacy. They're great for patching up little problems, solving problems. You can either tide you over till you get to the next port where there is an emergency dentist that you can try and see, or it can often just tide you over until you get back home and see your own dentist. If, like me, you travel with lots of different pieces of technology, a laptop, mobile phone, camera, iPod, got hair dryers, straighteners, things like that, it really does pay to pack a small extension cable. I've been on cruise ships where they've had USB outlets in the cabin, they've They've had English sockets, they've had European sockets, it's been marvellous. You can plug everything in and don't need to worry about it. However, I've also been on ships that have got one lonely plug socket and if you're travelling with a friend who also has 10,000 different bits of equipment, it can become very tricky. It really does pay, even if it's just an extra two outlets, it's really going to be worth it. I'm going to be cruising on Independence of the Seas and if you're going on a ship like that, there's a few things you're going to need to remember to take. For the rock wall, they require you to wear a pair of trainers. If you or your family are looking to use the ice rink, then you need to make sure you pack a pair of long trousers and a pair of socks. For those of you looking to use the flow rider, ladies, please pack a swimsuit because a bikini will not stay on with the force of the water. Also, guys, have a pair of swim shorts with a drawstring. Do it up really tightly and you'd be sure not to lose them. If you like doing the behind the scenes tour, then going into the galley or visiting the bridge, you are required to wear a pair of shoes with closed toes. No matter what cabin you've booked, if you've booked inside, if you've booked balcony, book a guaranteed version of that cabin and it will be cheaper than a cabin where you've picked the specific cabin because you you sort of end up with the leftover cabins but if you don't mind being at the back of the ship or lower down which i don't at all price is the main thing for me i don't care where i am a guaranteed cabin can be assigned at any point up to your cruise it could be a week before it could be a month before it could be a day before you will at least get the category that you've paid for and you could get an upgrade which would be fantastic but worst case scenario you get what you paid for so i don't think that's too bad a risk make sure you know what your cruise is really going to cost you and budget appropriately. Cruise lines largely price fares to get people on the ship and once you're on the ship they want you to spend as much money as possible. The things to really watch out for are gratuities, secondly excursions, Wi-Fi is also very expensive and also very importantly is drinks so most cruise lines do not include drinks they can mount up fairly significantly. The fifth thing that you should really watch out for is specialty dining. More and more cruise ships have alternative dining venues which they charge for above and beyond you know the buffet or the room service or the main dining room. Don't assume that drinks packages are cheaper than buying drinks as you go. Before you get a drinks package work out how many drinks you're likely to have a day and see how much that's going to cost you compared to the drinks package 
because sometimes it can be like you have to have eight drinks a day to make back your money from the drinks package which i just couldn't do if you've got a poor intensive cruise it might not be as worthwhile having a drinks package you're probably not going to drink as many cocktails so just have a look before you cruise always have travel insurance um, in recent years a lot of travel insurance providers have been catering towards cruise passengers and there are cruise specific policies available uh, these can often include things like emergency formal wear hire missed ports airline issues cancelled show excursions if you need to see the onboard doctor for whatever reason it can run incredibly expensive it can cost anywhere between 50 and 100 pound just for the consultation uh, before you even have any tests before you have any medications prescribed it really does pay to have a good policy and it definitely pays to have a cruise specific policy consider an inside cabin not just because they're cheapest but you get the best night's sleep in the entire world it's so dark you save quite a lot of money by booking an inside cabin it can sometimes be hundreds and i would prefer to spend that on a beverage package or an excursion than a window or a balcony really so at least consider an inside cabin use your phone not always in the way that you normally would because the cost of calls and Wi-Fi can be expensive. For a start, take a picture of your room number. It can be very easy to forget where you are and it's not always on your card. Secondly, when you get off the ship to go on a shore excursion, take a picture of the back on board time because the one thing you don't want to do is miss the boat. Don't always trust the time on your phone because if you're on a ship, you might go through a time zone. The ship doesn't change its time, your phone does. So always make sure you're on ship time. Thirdly, remember as well with phones to keep them away from your key card because the magnetic strip at the back can become demagnetized. There's nothing worse than walking back to your room at one end of a big ship trying the key card and it doesn't work. Keep your card in one place and your phone in another. So one of the things that I like to do, also because I like to self-explore more, is use the hop-on, hop-off buses in ports and cities where the cruise calls at. Someone has worked out and curated the best places to go. They will have a route which covers those most efficiently. They'll have a map which showing you where they are. And also they will have commentary. So you'll get an overview of the city, the history, what it's about. You'll get taken to all the must-see places. A stop will normally be at or near where the ship calls at. And if there isn't a regular stop there, they will often add in a specific stop for when ships are in port. It's a good idea to book some things in advance, like shore excursions, spa treatments and restaurants. But don't go too mad. Remember, a cruise is a holiday, not a marathon. Leave yourself some free time. It's a good idea as well to make a schedule before you go. That sounds a bit organised, but at least you'll know where you're eating, what you're doing, where you're going what time the shore excursions are. Of course, you'll get reminders, you'll get the tickets on the ship, but it's always good to know, what am I doing today? Don't forget to leave an outfit out the night before disembarkation. As you know, you have to leave your cases outside of your cabin the night before you leave the ship, and nobody wants to see a naked passenger running down the gangway. Follow and subscribe to Cruise Bloggers. You'll get an ongoing flow of information, advice, and tips. If you want to follow all of us, you'll find how to contact us and follow us in the description of this video. It's an ongoing way to ensure that you have a great cruising experience. If you have any other tips, ideas, or suggestions, please also leave those in the comment and start a discussion. So here's to happy, safe, and really wonderful cruising experiences. <music>